of my favorite things to draw when I'm just doodling are my little doodle bugs, I call them. Well, sort of make calligraphic lines and they turn into bugs. And these are bugs that are from my head. Uh, no, not the bugs that are in my head are living there and consuming my brain cells as I speak, but from my imagination. And it's just a fun way to make mark making. That was a big thing when I was in, in graduate school. I was I'm into mark making. Yeah. That's what you said when you didn't have a clue as to what you were actually doing. Oh, I'm, I'm into mark making. That's what you're doing. Okay, mark making. Um, no, I'm sure the mark makers are very important members of the art community because I'm making marks right now. <clears throat> but Again, mark makers uh, such as myself right now are just, or I don't want to say just, that's not the right word, are interested in the, um, just the joy of and the value in uh, the, not, well, the making of the marks. Yes, that's obvious. What am I trying to say, Pierre? Um, it's like the, it's the draw, drawing version of the word painterly. You know, John Singer Sargent was painterly. You could tell that those were paintings. You could see the paint. You know, the paint was really an important, the brush strokes, the, all of that was really important. Or other people try to hide the brush strokes. They try to make the their paintings look like the real thing. I was watching a show about Van Eyck and Durer, and you know they they are so exact. You don't see the brushstroke at all. You just see the 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 thing they're drawing, and um, it's really they're beautiful. There's nothing wrong with them, but I I tend to like the images that where you see the brushwork, where you see the crosshatchy lines, where you see the the way the artist plopped the ink down or the paint down. And um, so pen and inkerly, there has to be a better term than that. I don't know what, this is a weird, this has eyeballs on the end of long stalks. There's a bug that, that has those. This looks like a, a hammerhead shark, but it's a bug. And anyway, it's just fun to make marks sometimes, just to, the joy of scribbling, you know, it's, it's not doodling. Doodling isn't really about the making of the mark. It's about the, what you end up at the end. You get a bunch of circles. I mean, it's about fidgeting and stuff, but it's not... Scribbling is more what I'm doing than doodling. There's something about the physical action, the intention of scribbling, I think, is is more aggressive than doodling. I think doodling is passive. You know, you're doodling when you're talking on the phone to your accountant. Well, no, you're sweating bullets when you're talking to your accountant on the phone. No, you're, um, when you're just talking on the phone with the neighbor, gossiping about who's sleeping with whom, that's doodling. Scribbling is like aggression, and that's sort of what I'm doing here. 
I'm supposed to be doing work, but instead I'm mark-making. No, I don't know what I'm doing. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I do know what I'm doing it with. I'm doing it with this Waterman Stately. Now, the Waterman Stately, this pen was made to imitate uh, the Parker 51, which I've talked about many, many times, and they were... Um, if you're only looking at the imitation, if you're looking at the real thing, oh yes, this is a poor imitation of the real thing. But if you're looking at the line that this produces, this produces a more varied line because there's more nib exposed than a Parker 51. And because there's more nib exposed, you can get flexibility, a flexible line in it. So these pens, <clears throat> though, are not valued by the purists who look at pens and they think, oh, this is just, he's, this is just a derivative. This is derivative of the Parker 51. It's just a, it's just a bad attempt at taking perfection and getting around the patents. But if I had, if I were on a desert island and wanted to draw, I would be, rather have this pen with me than, a, than the perfect Parker 51 because this allows me to get a variety of line. Sometimes you notice my pen is skipping, and it's not because it's not working. Sometimes when you are drawing on a piece of paper or writing on a piece of paper, you'll notice that the pen will skip, and part of that uh, can be caused by the fact that the uh, paper has oils of the hand on it. And this piece of paper has been kicking around my studio forever. And I've probably used the back of it. To, no, I didn't. I didn't use the back of it. But anyway, it's just been on my desk, and so I've handled it a lot. So occasionally it'll skip. Here is a big bug with big eyes, big fishnet stocking eyes. Um, doodle bugs. So anyway, these pens, this pen also is, has, I'm drawing this one upside down. I didn't mean to do that, but I am. This bug also, this pen is also, uh, even if you liked these pens, let's pretend you liked these pens. You were one of these pen collectors. You were these renegade pen, pen collectors, such as myself, that actually likes in their collection a full range of things, and you like pens that are 51 wannabes, like this one. Even this pen, uh, people like them may disdain them because it does have a flaw which doesn't inv make any difference at all for how, when, how it writes. but. It was evidently in a, the heat of a antique show flea market or something, and you see how it's bent upward at the end. And so it has a little curve to it that um, doesn't interfere at all with the pen. I have one pen, it's actually a f I don't want to say a favorite. It's a it's a very good example of <clears throat> a pen that has been used by its owner. And I have a collection of pens that show trauma, <clears throat> both f horrible trauma, like being run over by a truck, and 
dishonest trauma from being used and or being chewed on at the end. I mean, no one's going to want these pens except for me. And I just like them as an example of uh, a, a pen that has shown wear and use and love. It was loved by the person that owned it. And um, it's like a pair of well-loved denim jeans. You wouldn't think of throwing away them, even if they have a hole and a rip and a tear and they're faded. You love them because they are so comfortable. And I've got pens that are like that. Pens that have been loved to death. And this pen is really amazing. I should have it out here to show you, maybe another time. But it's completely warped because of the way it was held. You could tell the metal part of the cap where, the, where it hit the back of the hand here, this is almost worn away. It's not just plating is taken off of it. There's actually parts of the metal that are gone because it was, and then this part where it was held really, really hard, it's warped this way. So it's really interesting that that was um, not thrown away. It was kept for years and years and years or decades by the owner as he wrote aggressively his letters of indignation to his congressman or whatever it was, whatever he did or she, no, it was a he, it's, it's a name on the, on the pen, so I know it's a he. Um, whatever he did, he did it with power and strength, and he did not doodle, he scribbled. Scribbling is, is aggressive, and so anyway, these are doodle bottles, and these are drawn with this pen. It's a uh, it's this slightly smaller, shorter version of the same model. This is the larger version. The barrel is shorter, this part is shorter, the cap is shorter. Um, often those are considered ladies' pens, but um, I think they're quite uh, lovely, regardless of your genitalia. The genitalia belonging to the hand that's holding the pen. I think, I mean, unless you write with your genitalia, it doesn't make any difference. Whether you're a guy or a dame holding this thing. So, anyway. It's a really fun pen. Very sturdy. Very sturdy. I'll do one more bug and then I'll try to do whatever else I'm doing here. Where am I? Where am I? Bump. On the... What kind of wings is this guy going to have? I was, whenever I say things like that, I'm reminded of Bob Ross. That hack. Oh, what kind of wings are they going to have? This little happy rock next to this happy tree, next to this happy mountain. Mountains aren't happy. What I disliked about him was that he was on public television. And I said to one of the people that runs public television when they were asking me for money like during a fun drive I said I'm just offended as an artist I'm offended by that it would be as if you know I should do a cooking show you know get rid of Julia Childs it's too difficult to follow her directions I'll do a cooking show and it would all be TV dinners Maybe Manwich once in a while. We'll have a Manwich show. But they'd be TV dinners and Hot Pockets 
things that you just have to heat up or microwave because that's what his art was like. You just draw a happy tree. That's not how you paint art. It's not even how you paint, for God's fuck's sake. Oh, sorry, for God's sake. That one has fuzzy pom-poms. You know what? Those things that cheerleaders bounce around with. No, not their boobs. I'm not talking about that. The things that they hold in their hands. Those are called pom pon poms They're not pom-poms. They're pon poms P-O-N-P-O-M-S. Pon poms Don't say you never learned anything on the interweb. Waterman, Taper Wright, Bugs, Pon Palms. Thank you.